days like these, when skies are blue and fields are green, I look around the Italian city of Turin and think about what might have been if Michael Caine and co hadn't come here in 1969 to film the British comedy classic, The Italian Job. Granted, Turin already had its claims to fame. The home of football gods, apparently. The shroud of the son of God, allegedly. Nutty chocolate spread loved by children and nutty chocolate balls loved by ambassadors. And of course, Fiat. More about that later. Turin's Roman name Torino derives from the name Torini, a Celtic tribe who settled in the surrounding mountains raising bulls, hence why the bull is the city's emblem. Rubbing one's soul on the most vital spot of the golden bull outside the city's famous Café Torino is said to bring the bear a good fortune, something Charlie Croker possibly should have done in 1969. Croker, played by Michael Caine, leads a group of cockney thieves and gangsters through the streets of Turin, with hilarious consequences, in an entourage of Mini Coopers, filled with the city's gold that they have just stolen. They finalise their plans in their hideout here, in the beautiful Villa della Regina, a 17th century palace built up in the hills overlooking Turin for the then ruling house of Savoy. The gang may not have had time to enjoy the palace's stunning frescoes and fruitful vineyard, but no doubt chose the location for its breathtaking backdrop of the city they were soon to rob from. Croker sees the gang off, and later the ambush on the security van carrying the gold happens here, in Piazza Palazzo di Citta. The van is forced into the palazzo, the door is bolted, and the gang load the gold onto the three waiting minis. However, camera trickery deceives the viewer here, as in reality this is not in fact the interior courtyard of the Palazzo di Citta, but of the Palazzo Carigano, half a kilometre away, right in the heart of the historic centre. Just to prove it, if the gang had walked back out of the door into the adjacent square, sorry, piazza, and turned around without getting arrested or mobbed by the angry crowd, the front of the building would have looked like this. Once the gold is loaded, the minis set off before the police break the door down and find the thieves gone. The gang's escape is hampered by a city-wide traffic jam, of their creation done to distract the police and the mafia. As a result, the route the minis take is certainly unconventional. They are first seen driving through and down the stairway of the Grand Palazzo Madama. This elegant Baroque extension to a 13th century castle has in the past acted as a royal residence, a parliament building and a supreme court, but now houses the city's civic museum of ancient art. The original vision for the lavish stairway was for it to be an airy open loggia, but because of Turin's capricious weather conditions, it was decided to make it an internal feature of the palace instead, hence the stunning windows. Once at the bottom, the minis take the exit, which technically should have led them out onto Piazza Castello, but thanks to the magic and editing powers of film, the minis appear coming down more steps into the Galleria dell'Industria su Polbina. This elegant shopping mall, built in 1874, was inspired by the passages of Paris that were fashionable amongst affluent society at the time. Named after the bank that financed it, the Sul Pupina was one of three similar gallerias built in the city in the late 19th century. The minis whiz around it and then exit into Turin's signature porticos, driving down via Roma that's now pedestrianised no longer serves chicken or horse as a takeaway option. The minis then turn into the Galleria San Federico, hotly pursued by a police motorcyclist who famously skids on the freshly washed marble floor, allowing the mini entourage to escape. Fifty years on, hygiene standards here remain high, as the floor was spotlessly clean the day I visited it. 
Built in 1933, the Art Deco Galleria replaced the 19th century Galleria Natta after Via Roma was widened and the surrounding area modernised. There are stories that the third historic Galleria in Turin, the Galleria Umberto I, located in the Porto Palazzo area, had originally been considered to feature in the film. But because one of the shop owners in the arcade demanded far more compensation money for loss of business during filming than was on offer, it was decided to use one of the other Gallerias instead. The getaway is next seen around Porto Nuova, pursued into the station subway, which is now being completely redeveloped to accommodate Turin's state-of-the-art metro line. Partly opened in 2006 in time for the Winter Olympics and completed in its present state in 2011, the 21 station line has probably taken few Cockney gangsters as passengers, but does seem to take quite a few bears on board, going by some of the signs and even a section of seating reserved for their cubs. A more romantic form of public transport that would have been available to Croker and the gang at the time is the city's tramway system. Some routes still operate the city's classic orange cars. Their delightful wooden seats are surprisingly comfortable, but disappointingly, they don't swivel. If the gang had taken the number 15 to the end of the line, they could have taken the equally charming Sassy Supergar funicular that would have taken them out of the city and towards the Alps in style. This steep gradient railway line has been carrying passengers up and down the hill of Supergar since 1884, rising to an altitude of over 670 metres above the city. As well as offering some of the most breathtaking panoramas of Trim below, if it's not too misty, the funicular alights just a few hundred metres from the beautiful Basilica of Supergar. Built in the 18th century as a thank you to the Almighty for the defeat of the French during the Battle of Turin, the Basilica was the scene of disaster in 1949, when during heavy fog, an aircraft carrying the entire Torino football team crashed into the embankment behind it. 31 people died and there were no survivors. Back in the historic centre of Turin, Croker and the gang head next for the Chiesa Gran Madre di Dio. The steps of this church feature a couple of times in the movie. The first is during a film within the film, when Camp Freddy explains to Mr Bridger the logistics of the getaway route. The second is when the minis famously drive down them. Although built over a millennium after it, the church has the appearance of Rome's ancient pantheon, with a large vaulted domed roof, particularly stunning from the inside. Outside, a cinematic illusion is shattered, revealing a dead end around the back of the church where the minis apparently came from as well as measures that have since been put in place to prevent any car trying out that scene again. So, good luck with that. From there, the mob headed for this, Turin's Pallavella. Formerly known as the Palazzo Avella, and before that as the Palazzo del Mostre, the Pallavella stands a few kilometres south of the city in the area of Lingotto, it was originally built for the Italia 61 exposition that celebrated the centenary of the unification of Italy. Although the core building has been remodelled over the decades and now hosts an ice skating rink that was first used during the 2006 Winter Olympics, the iconic cell-shaped roof has always maintained its distinct appearance. It was constructed from a staggering 35,000 tonnes of concrete yet barely a couple of metres thick and almost freestanding, the mind boggles as to how it took the weight of the minis and that police car without caving in. And as for the cars getting up onto it in the first place, well, rising to a height of 29 metres and creating a rather steep slope, it wouldn't have been easy. One can see in the original film that the cars had to go at some speed to propel themselves up a ramp that was placed up against the roof to decrease the gradient. Once up there and tricking the squad car tailing them, they came back down again. 
and after an amusing moment of misdirection in a car park, they headed on to the famous Fiat factory roof track. Opened in 1923, the Fiat Lingotto factory, only a stone's throw away from the Pallavella, put Turin on the map. In fact, the T in Fiat stands for Torino. The largest automobile factory in Europe at the time, and the first constructed solely to produce cars, the avant-garde design of the building impressed even Le Cabousier. The production line began on the ground floor, with each of the stories of the building specialising in the next stage of car production. Models worked their way up the floors along one of two spiral ramps, located at either end of the building. And once completed, the models were driven onto the top of the factory, ready to be tested on the innovative rooftop racing track. For over 50 years, some of the world's most iconic and much-loved cars were built and tested here, including the Fiat Spider, the Fiat 500 and the Fiat Topolino. But the factory's efficiency significantly declined in the 1970s, and in 1982, Fiat ceased production here, these bollards arguably symbolising the track's historic end, as well as preventing drivers from using the track as a getaway route, again. Fearing an economic decline in the area due to the closure, the building was given a new purpose by famous architect Renzo Piano, who converted the building into a new communal hub, featuring a hotel, conference hall and shopping centre. The roof, however, was relatively untouched, apart from some additional spaces added, including the Pina Conteca Giovanni Emorella Agnelli Art Gallery, named in honour of the founding family of Fiat, and the Bubble, a small yet stunning conference room with helipad attached. What a shame this wasn't in place when Croker and the gang were driving around the track looking for that bloody exit in 1969 could have just flown out of Turin from here with far less fuss. The final stage of the escape is reached when the gang drive along and across the River Po, heading for the sewer tunnels, although those scenes were actually filmed in England. There is however a large network of tunnels underneath Turin, and one section in particular can be visited via the Pietro Mica Museum. In August 1706, subordian soldier Pietro Mica barred a door at the top of these steps that led to the mines underneath Turin's great citadel to prevent a group of enemy French grenadiers trying to infiltrate them. He blew the tunnel up, killing most of the group, but also fatally wounding himself. His sacrifice made him Turin's eternal hero, as the event marked the start of the end of the Battle of Turin. The point where his body was found several metres further into the tunnel is honoured to this day. Being too narrow for the minis, Croker and co escape the city elsewhere, and the rest is cinematic history. So one would expect a museum dedicated to the history of cinema in the very heart of Turin itself would possibly feature the Italian job in its collection. The Grand Mole Antonelliana, or Mole, is affectionately named so due to its dome resembling a mole snout, apparently. It was originally built in the late 19th century to be used as a synagogue, but for various reasons never became so. Since the year 2000, it has housed Italy's National Museum of Cinema. Turin's key landmark is a stunning building both inside and out although its lift will leave most visitors stunned. If one doesn't think about the 165 metre ascent through the centre of the building, with a complete lack of a physical shaft around the glass carriage, visitors should be able to enjoy the dome's interior up close, before reaching the top and marvelling the splendid panoramic views of the city from the outside viewing deck. Back at ground floor level, the museum has a fine collection of classic movie posters, understandably with an Italian bias, authentic movie memorabilia, and a passionate enthusiasm for the art of cinema and its stars. One section in particular celebrates Turin's starring role on the silver screen. Surprisingly though, there is no mention of the Italian job here, 
not even a poster of Michael Caine, nor a clip of the film, in the showreel compiling all other known films featuring the Piedmont capital. Maybe in 2019, when the movie celebrates its 50th anniversary, the museum may mark the occasion appropriately. But until then, I left my own commemoration. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you might need to do it backwards. 